the show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's November the 1st, 2022. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Canesport.com, joined as always by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day presented by Life Wallet, where the time is now to take charge of your personal health. And speaking of Life Wallet, Matt, I had the opportunity to go visit uh, John Ruiz yesterday afternoon, and uh, it was really pretty interesting. And we did a, a, a fairly extended interview that's on the website this morning for everybody to watch, uh, talking about year one of Life Wallet's participation in NIL. And it's it's really kind of amazing because um, all these months have really passed very, very quickly. Uh, you know, it was right around the time just before Mario Cristobal was hired that John Ruiz decided that he was going to get involved in NIL as part of his uh, marketing strategy for the rollout of the Life Wallet brand. And obviously, nobody had ever heard of Life Wallet. A lot of people thought it was a joke. Um, you know, questioned whether it was going to be a legitimate program, whether John Ruiz was going to was going to pay the players and all that. Well, here we sit a year later, and it's the prototype for NIL programs that everybody's trying to match. And uh, what's going on is uh, collectives are forming all over the country, obviously, but nobody has been able to come close to legitimately replicating, at least nothing that I've seen so far, what John Ruiz has created right here in South Florida uh, with his MSP recovery company, which w w ended up going public during the course of the year, uh, and Life Wallet. And uh, what I learned in when I went to do this interview with John was that we are just in the early stages of this Life Wallet rollout. He is expanding the Life Wallet brand, uh, looking to open uh, sports bar esque facilities. With the Life Wallet Sports name on it, uh, that'll include restaurant and studios where they can do live broadcasts and podcasts and and different things. And um, he's got a lawyer referral service now, branded by Life Wallet. And I think we're going to see a continuation of the expansion of the Life Wallet brand. And you know, what exactly does that mean for NIL? Well. It's going to mean more money, everybody, which is a good thing. I was reading yesterday, Auburn, which just fired their football coach, has put together a $13 million collective to help the next coach be able to go out and recruit and um, and help Auburn make some kind of great comeback in the SEC. I mean, changing coaches every couple of years is certainly not going to help their cause. Um, but the, the John Ruiz budget, Matt, was $10 million. Here in year one, uh, he doesn't have exact figures yet of what how it will increase, but he made it pretty clear it's going to be more than ten million. And listen, based on what we're seeing in the competitiveness in the NIL arena right now with these collectives, uh, more budget is a good thing. I'm in talks with John Ruiz right now to be renamed Life Wallet Shodell. There you go, and, man. And. Uh, you know, if it benefits everybody, then it benefits everybody. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not going to, uh, what's the word? I don't know what the word is. But, um, you know, I, I wasn't sure John Ruiz would be for real. I still am not sure he will be for real five years from now, ten years from now. I'm still not even sure what his ulterior motive is since, uh, you know, people just tell me he's not really a Miami Hurricanes fan. I don't know if he likes the attention. I don't know. I don't know what drives him. But the bottom line is if he's paying the bills. That's all that Miami Hurricane fans should care about. And right now he's paying the bills. So I as long as this keeps up. If he, I don't know if he was a Miami Hurricanes fan his whole life. I think now he clearly is a Miami Hurricanes fan. People tell me how uh, emotional he is watching games at the stadium. How, you know, how when, when the Canes aren't playing well, how he's as upset as anybody else. Uh, not because it's costing him money. Of course it's costing him money when they don't no, win. It's not because, it, and he and I actually talk about this in the interview, that how the team wins and loses and the players play and all that, um, what what he is most concerned with is, and, and what they try to rationalize is the player's value to the exposure that the company gets. And he used, like we were talking about Nigel Pack with basketball season coming up and how a lot of people 
thought he was overpaying for Nigel Pack when he did a two-year uh, $800,000 deal with Nigel, paying him $400,000 a year. And he points out that Nigel Pack is about to be one of the biggest names of the college basketball season because he's on a bigger stage in the ACC with Miami. He is a knockdown shooter, uh, and Miami looks like it's going to be pretty good. And he thinks that Life Wallet's affiliation with Nigel Pack is going to bring all sorts of residual uh, return uh, to him and his company, Life Wallet. And and um, he went on to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Omier and um, also Isaiah Wong. And, um, you know, they're, they're, I mean, listen, uh, we could try to put a value on it. I mean, I've seen, let's say Life Wallet was Coca-Cola. And they were putting the Coca-Cola name on all these kids and and in, in contracts with these kids and stuff and getting the exposure, people would be looking at it differently. They'd be saying, wow, great marketing buy by Coca-Cola. Um, you know, people spend $10 million in one shot all the time in, in marketing. It's not really a ton of money in terms of the business world. And, um, you know, I'm not sure, and we talked about this also, I'm not sure everybody knows exactly what life wallet is yet. Uh, cause it, and, and, and he said, that's a challenge for them because it's very hard to communicate it in simple terms. And they're trying to think through their commercials and things like that, but there's no mistaking that people have heard. A lot of people have heard the name life wallet and understand that it is involved in NIL, um, primarily at Miami, but also at some other schools. There is no return on investment for doing NIL deals with college football student athletes for millions of dollars. That's a fact, unless you have major face recognition with fans and major national recognition with fans, which right now Miami players do not. The reason why somebody who invests heavily in NIL with a team would be upset if a team loses is because guess what? If Miami was in the playoff picture, if Miami was ranked number one, life while it would be front and center and will be front and center if that ever happens because, you know, national media will be saying John Ruiz is the reason Miami got there. That's what he wants to happen. That's what maybe he will get. And if he does, fans will celebrate. But from what I've heard, it's the exact opposite of what you're saying. Uh, $10 million is nothing to major, major, major companies. It's a lot of money for most conglomerates that are looking to invest in NIL deals that happen to be fans that run businesses. And the business people out there that aren't fans are not doing life wallet you're not seeing big amounts of money from coca-cola from anybody for nil deals when they can because there is no return on investment but you are are no jerseys the rule is no jerseys can be worn no logos are allowed all you're allowed is a face saying something for a company a face that nobody even knows what they look like unless they're a fan of that team because they're covered by a helmet when anybody's watching a game the ncaa has done a huge disservice for players that want to have national branding Right now, it's just who's got a who's a fan that has a company that wants to throw some money at me and not have a return on investment. And it, yeah, if you're a national champion, maybe you get the return on your investment. Short of that, you can shake your head all you want. That's what I've been hearing, and I think it's true. It makes it's common sense. Well, you're not you're not up to speed on this. I mean, oh, okay. I'm, shak- I'm shaking my head. I'm not surprised that I disagree with you as usual, but you know. I just turned. Where, where's Where's Gatorade and Coke and I'm Ford gonna, I'm and get, GM? I'm, get, I'm getting ready to tell right. you. I, I okay. just turned. I just turned to the On Three NIL news feed because On Three is covering NIL uh, better than anybody in the country, and they have deal trackers and uh, and news feeds and uh, all sorts of information. So I go to the main uh, news feed page, and one of the first things I see is that the Jordan brand has signed UCLA's Kiki Rice. Right. Well, that's okay. That's that's as 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 its first. Wait a minute. As its first NIL athlete. athlete, Wait a minute. Would you agree that the Jordan brand is a major company? No, because Nike, Adidas, sports brands. Of course, you invest in athletes. I'm talking about Coke. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about these companies that aren't sports brands. Of course, sports brands will be interested. Okay. There's a company called Kane Footwear that just signed five players at Ohio State. Not Um, athletic brands, Gary. Not not sneakers. Not jerseys. Not I'm Things continuing like to, to, yeah, to thank you. Go. I'm continuing to go, go here. Up here. Yeah. Um, I you know, I've got to I've got to keep keep scrolling. So you're gonna have to have patience with me, but there's tons of these that are that have been popping up um all over the place. Outback Steakhouse. That's a good one. How much do they has, give it to who? Has signed a bunch of uh 
a, a bunch of uh, athletes to NIL deals. How many um, and how much? Do they have a track? I'm, 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 I don't have time to read every individual one of these. ATT, AT&T, Fiber has entered into an NI deal at Tennessee. Uh, I, I mean, I'll keep going. I mean, there's, 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 okay, there's so, so then maybe, maybe I'm incorrect constantly. You, 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 you what know, I've heard, what I've heard locally, for instance, is the Moss brothers were initially going to be interested and then realized there's no return on the investment. I guess if other companies the, think some, for some reason it's worth it, then they're doing it. But no, that is, that is Miami. I've heard that's the problem. That is correct on the Moss brothers. The Moss brothers decided not to get involved in NIL. I'm sure they're going to be heavily involved probably in the new football facility, uh, they have decided not to put their money in an NIL. The reason, that is they feel, and, the reason being they feel there's no return on investment. Well, for them, <laughs> there's the reasons not. I just laid out. So. Matt, for them, there's not. They're, a, they're an infrastructure company. Right. Uh, Moss, Moss Tech uh, is, is digging holes and laying cables all over America. There is not a benefit to them doing NIL. No, right. they're, they're, And that's why they're not. But to some of these other companies, uh, there are. Gatorade signed Anthony Richardson, uh, for example. Um, That's sports-related. Again, again, I can see the sports-related stuff. The at and hey, surprise me. How about Dunkin' Donuts, Matt? Is that sports-related? Outback Steakhouse surprised me. Dunkin' Donuts surprises me. Because, okay, but, it, but is that sports-related? No. No, no. That's, that's why I said they surprised me, because they're not sports-related. To me, okay. they're throwing away their money. This NIL is for fans who have businesses Dan, to throw uh, money at people, because this is nah. not – brand name student athletes and again i don't know who they're representing i get the quarterback in florida should get a big deal i get that because he has the recognition especially for gatorade but if you're just going to throw a million dollars ten million dollars to some random people on a team you're not getting a return on investment and that's what you have to do because nil is about getting recruits at the end of the day Matt, if you're, you're going to pay somebody you're, you're, you're so pay. you're so so wrong about I, what? Mean, I, I mean based on your theory that any marketing buy that any company makes is a waste of time. No, it is not. Pepsi you're has not listening. Been, again, Pepsi, again, Pepsi, you're not, Pepsi, Pepsi. Again, you're not listening to me. Is because, Pepsi an athletic company? No. They, they have entered. I already, the said, I, I already said, I, I already said, I'm surprised. I was surprised at that. But now you're not listening to what I said once again. What I said is at the end of the day, big NAL deals are for recruiting. Because to build a program like it, and we're talking about Miami, right? You need the money for recruits, not for established players who will help your business grow because they have a recognition. High school seniors are not going to make you a lot of money for NIL deals. You could sign them and say, well, maybe in three years, there'll be big names and I'll sign them. But in three years, someone else will sign them for more money and get them at a different school. But Miami specifically needs the money for NIL deals for recruits, which is what John Ruiz is for. Kid comes in, you'll have a million dollars as a freshman, whatever it is, make up a number. But there's no money in that. Like, I don't care what you say about Ford. If I was wrong about all that stuff, fine. But that's not really, at the end of the day, what Miami needs. And John Ruiz is throwing away his money. Like, it's great. It's great because you have to do it. Matt, if but somebody buys a senior coming in as a freshman who's not going to play probably, getting a ton of $10 million from John Ruiz for this bunch of freshmen coming in and a few other guys that are coming back, whatever. Like, you know, if you think he's making a ton of money off of that, okay. I don't. I disagree. I, I think, think he's doing it. Maybe he thinks he's way. making money, but I don't think he is. Let me put it that. this way. Okay. No, he's not making dollar for dollar right now, but he, let me put it this way. If MSP recovery is a, is a big business, they do tens of millions of dollars of business. I don't have the exact number in front of me. Uh, Life Wallet is a division of MSP recovery. Life Wallet is a brand that they are trying to develop in that company. If you're trying to develop a brand with a new name and you can't get it name exposure, that brand is worthless, okay? Um, and, you know, people can qu question the legitimacy of the whole thing, and, and I know they have, and and it's certainly open for debate, but uh, you can't question and you can't debate or dispute the fact that Life Wallet has become a very well-known brand name in this country because of their involvement in NIL and all of the discussion about it. Um you know, Pepsi is partnering with college football players across the country through NIL deals to promote the simple uh, a, initiative that they have with recycling. So you're going to say, why would Pepsi create create this recycling initiative? Uh, because they're trying to show that they support plastic bottle recycling that all of their soft drinks go in. OK, that is worth a lot of money to them to, to do that. And they're signing a large number of football players around the country 
to be pitch people for this initiative. And for them, why is that any different than buying a Super Bowl commercial for $5 million or, or they're, they're probably even more expensive than that now. Uh, it, there's, there's, there's not a difference. Um, um, Listen, I'm not a business, I'm not a businessman. All I know is what I hear, and locally, I don't know who I don't know who you're hearing this from because you're not hearing it from a marketing person. Um, I mean, a marketing person. What I'm hearing it from is people who are deciding not to do the nil conglomerate. What do you want to call it? That's what I'm hearing. Is, is but it doesn't is work. It doesn't work it. for everybody. Correct. Uh, Texas. I'm just going down the list for you. Texas had a few players sign nil deals with the uh, the company Sonic. Um, right. So listen, I, I did not do my research on that. I told, I just already told you because hammer the same thing over and over again. At the end of the day, as it pertains to Miami, I stand by what I said. Of course I'm hammering it I, over and over again. I'm proving over and over again, how wrong you are. Right, like, I that, said, I, I said, said creation I was, for me. Okay. People are going to be <laughs> making comments on YouTube. Oh, uh, Gary was so happy. You were on, so happy. On, on I've Morning never seen for today because yet again, he proved Matt wrong on something. Matt you know, was talking I, w- about. I wish I could say that Gary asked me to be wrong about this in the first place, just so he could be happy for once. But I actually was uninformed. Right. On the I got a couple more. Scene. I got a couple However, more for you. Why, is, why aren't these companies investing in Miami? That's another question to ask. But listen. I have a couple day, more for you. Sacks, day, sacks, sacks the, underwear. Day, the, reason I'm, the reason I'm uninformed is because I cover Miami. And it's a little disheartening that it's just one guy right now that's doing the whole freaking thing. And if, you know, and his stock hasn't done real well. Van Dyke, it. And if this thing I, I wish I had the Tyler reason, Van Dyke list in front of me right now. He, I bet you he has NIL deals with 15, 20 companies. Tyler Van Dyke. Well, hey, let's find just, out. You got to get up to speed on this subject, let's, man. Uh, let's find out. I mean, I know he does. He's got Tyler Van Dyke, has, and, and he is obviously the most marketable Miami Hurricane player. He has NIL deals that the Rosenhaus agency has contracted for him with like 15, 20 companies. Um, here's a couple more for you. Saks Underwear did a deal with the South Carolina football team. Reese's uh, picked out 12 players in college football, um, I believe that had the last name of Reese. Um, yeah, 12, they, 12 uh, college football players who had the last name of Reese Got NIL deals um, with yeah, what I'm looking at for Tyler is mostly sports related stuff from what I can see. But anyway, the, he's look, representing all the, kinds of people. The, the point is, at the end of the day, he's my a needs, moving company, Matt, um, fans have lost interest in this part of it, because at the end of the day, what really matters to fans is rebuilding the program and getting recruits. <laughs> Fans have lost interest. This is Matt Shodell. Fans have lost interest in this conversation because I am wrong and I need Gary to turn the page. We have a lot of other stories on the website today and I need Gary to move on from this subject because I I am getting undressed in this conversation. That is Um, true. I am going to have to take my T-shirt with the alligator on it and (laughs) change it to a T-shirt with a Seminole Indian on it because – I am That's, getting undressed in this it, debate. It, it could have been worse. I could have been caught on a hot mic saying something like Mario Cristobal isn't going to be the coach while I'm still here. <laughs> but but listen, what I was trying to say before you interrupt me was not to move on from NIL. I was trying to say what Miami fans care about is getting recruits to rebuild the program because quite honestly, throwing money at guys that are already here that are on this team right now that's not doing real well isn't going to help the team progress very much. And the bottom line is when you give money to high school seniors, you're taking a leap of faith. And, you know, God bless his heart, apparently. John Ruiz is willing to throw his money away. And if you want to disagree with me that he's throwing his money away on high school seniors when they get here, we can disagree about that, and I'll tell you you're wrong. Matt, how about the Cavender Twins? Are they Miami athletes? The Cavender Twins are a marketing brand. I have never actually – I think they're robots, as a matter of fact, because (laughs) I've seen those ads, and there's like 50 of them. How can there be 50 real people? These are the two most successful women's athletes in America that happen to wear a Miami Hurricanes uniform and are not just relying on Life Wallet and Cigarette. Yeah, listen, I I had a long – in in my defense, I had a long day, and uh, I had to write a whole bunch of stories. And, you know, NIL is not something – NIL, honestly, is not something I'm a fan of. I I know it's great for the student athletes. I just think it's ruining college football. And, you know, that's a whole other discussion, but – now I asked John Ruiz that. Uh, I'll segue back into the interview. Uh, I've, I've I've done enough roasting Matt Shodell. Um, we talked about that also. Uh, you know, I I think I mentioned on this show a few days ago that somebody gave me a call and brought up the concept that the two most disappointing or two of the 
most disappointing teams in college football this year were Texas A&M and Miami. And those were the two leading NIL schools. And, and they were saying, does NIL affect uh, how hard players play, effort, how much time the players put into the sport? Uh, are they going home and worrying about their NIL deals and their bank accounts and things like that as opposed to studying their game plan and their playbook? I thought it was a legit question for sure. Uh, John does not believe that that is a, is an issue um, just for the record. And, um, but it was the, the bottom line on all this is uh, had a very interesting, almost 30 minute talk with John Ruiz about NIL, uh, what he's getting out of it. Uh, you know, for the match show of the world that, don't understand and want to know what he. I really don't. I really what, don't. I, I what, don't understand. Want to know what he feels like. He's yes, you do. You want to know. So, so you know, want you want want to know um, what he feels he's getting out of it and stuff. And we talk about all those different things in uh, in our interview. And if you are interested in this subject, um, I highly recommend that uh, you do uh, check out uh, my interview this morning with John Ruiz. That's on the website. All right, um, we got a, obviously a bunch of other uh, stories to talk about today. Um, but first, while we're on the subject, why don't we take a moment and hear from our friends at LifeWallet. I'm JC Henton, and most people don't realize it, but I suffer from asthma, which is why I'm glad I have my LifeWallet to protect me out of the water and in the water. You don't have to hold your breath. Life Wallet's got you covered. Life Wallet, saving time, saving lives. Get Life Wallet today. All right. So, in a little bit of support before I move on to like what kind of what you're saying, like you watch that commercial and you don't really get the true message of what Life Wallet is. And that's one of the things that John talked about that they want to improve in year two in conceiving their commercials, they want to do a better job of getting across exactly what this app does and what it is and why, why people should want to have it. So it'll be interesting to see how they evolve with that over the next year. All right. Other stories on the website uh, so that we could save Matt Shodell from the undressing. That I'm not for myself. Save me for myself. <laughs> um, we um, we we catch up in recruiting with a, a receiver from California by the name of uh, Tayshon Lyons, and he's a kid that Miami got on late, uh, and it looked like that was going to really hurt them very very badly. But um, they have since done a good job of making up ground, and uh, now are engaged in a neck and neck battle with Notre Dame and. Um, Azubi Charles caught up with Tayshon and found out that, that Tayshon is actually trying to make travel plans to come to Miami this weekend for the Florida State game. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if he does end up making it. And, um, you know, so that's that's a story we have on the website. Uh, there was plenty of news that came out from our conversations with uh, the coordinators uh, yesterday, uh, Josh Gaddis. And, and Kevin Steele. And um, the interesting thing, Matt, about Kevin Steele was uh, he had obviously been spending a lot of time studying Florida State's offense. And he said Mike Norvell changes up the, the offense on an almost weekly basis. And the toughest thing about preparing for Florida State is that you know that you are going to see things that you have never seen before. You know, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, uh, that's what I was hoping Miami would be doing to people, you know, <laughs> at some point. But there, there are really good offensive minds, and Kevin Steele talked about it, He's, you know, how it's virtually impossible to hold down any offense nowadays just because of how complex it is to try and stop some of these guys and the way they run things. Uh, I think Miami's going to have to score probably 24-plus points to have a chance uh, on Saturday, and uh, that might be a challenge. Uh, but again... In Miami, Florida State, anything can happen. It's gonna be a fun, it's gonna be a fun night for sure. 
You you know, you mentioned you pull out that number 24. Um, how are you coming to that number, just out of curiosity? It's based on the amount of millions of dollars that John Ruiz has wasted in the last year and a half. <laughs> no, it's just my opinion. I mean, you can pick any number you want. Three touchdowns and a field goal. I, I just don't know that Miami is going to be able to hold FSU below that, quite honestly. You know, as, as good as they played against Virginia and as much as Miami wants to say that their defense is one of the is one of, if not the best defense in the country, like they're not, you know, they play terrible offenses most of the time when they don't, they've been sort of beaten, you know, deep on a lot of plays. And actually Kevin Steele got really mad at some reporter who asked about all the plays they've gotten <laughs> beaten on. He says, how many plays have we been, been beaten on? <laughs> and the, the poor guy's like 43. And Kevin Steele's like, I have the number right here. And there's not many. Apparently, Kevin Steele uh, feels like anything below 20 in terms of explosive plays allowed is, is actually very, very good. <laughs> um, you know, it, you're making an interesting point, though. I, you know, I can't believe I'm saying this after your track record. Listen, so I don't know NIL. I'm not a business person, okay? I don't know NIL. I literally told you okay. I made a mistake. I don't know. I'm like, you went crazy. I've never seen you so happy. Like, I, I don't know. Matt like, like, yes, is burying himself this it's, morning. It's like, you won, <laughs> it's like you won the Match Hotel lottery. <laughs> Which is apparently just, you know, digging a, how deep is a grave? Six feet, ten feet? I don't know how deep you're going to bury me. But it's just like no, digging a grave for uh, me in the back. I get such a, I get such in, a the wolves, Dig me up again and eat my bones again because he wouldn't even let it go. <laughs> he must have mentioned it like 50 times in the first five minutes. Like, Matt Trudell was wrong. Matt Trudell was wrong. And you know what, Gary? <laughs> we had 100% no. likes yesterday. You're going to get like barely any likes today, okay? Everywhere I go, I got people saying to me, I'm a, I'm a, I, I, went, I was out, I, I, I took a few hours on, on Sunday and I went out to the Live Golf event at Doral. And I'm running into our, our subscribers and our viewers left and right out there. Hey, Gary, I'm, I'm Team Gary. And then another guy says, Hey, I hope you don't hold this against me, but I'm actually Team Matt. You know, I'm, I, I, I like that. I mean, it's like, I'm like what? There, there will be no more Team Matt after my NIL segment. It was so funny. I was like, man, we created a monster with this show. But um uh literally a monster. Listen, you know, you gotta take your win. You gotta take your wins, man. You gotta take your wins. And that was certainly I mean, wow. You, wow. I mean, I will I never was, have I mean, a I was like, first of all, you didn't win. It was more like I was Virginia, you were Miami, and I essentially gave you the game. You didn't do no. anything to win. You did not win. No, I just people, lost. People were crashing their cars all over I-95 driving to work right now in euphoria over the magnitude of and the size of my victory this morning. Remarkable. I mean, I mean, I've never like, you know, like uh, I've, if I was driving and I, and I saw a lane that wide, I'd be like, Vroom. so you may, you brought up the number 24. Uh, I don't know what the number really is. I'm not going to debate the number with no one you. Knows what the number is until Saturday night at like one in the morning. Correct. That's why I'm not going to debate it with you. Although I would love to have another, I'd love to score another victory here. By the um, way, clocks change for the last time on Saturday. So it's actually starting at six 30. Technically, not technically, but basically. Oh, really? It's well, yeah, no, but no, but don't confuse people. The game starts at seven 30. Everybody. You know the clocks are never great. changing again. Did you know that? Yeah. You're having a tough morning. All right. Listen, so I don't know what the number is, is the point. Um, but where I will agree is it's going to be higher than what we saw in Virginia on on Saturday. If Miami can't score in this game, Miami's not winning. I mean, uh, the odds makers are making Florida State eight, nine-point favorites coming to Miami. That tells you what they think about the Miami offense. And um, somehow, some way, man, they're going to have to trust Jake Garcia again. They are going to have to run a real offense in this game. They cannot have a dialed back game plan like they had at Virginia. You, they, they were able to get away with it at Virginia. Matt, I don't think that works against Florida State on Saturday. You know, I posted something on the message board yesterday. And tell me if I'm crazy. You, you know Mario well. We, I know Mario well. When Mario started talking at his press conference yesterday about how great Tyler Van Dyke is progressing, how he's practicing, that like making it sound like he's 100% healthy. Did it occur to you like it occurred to me that Mario just basically told us that Tyler Van Dyke is not playing? Because he certainly would not want FSU to know if Tyler was playing. And the only reason he'd want to make it seem like Tyler was doing great 
is because Tyler wasn't going to be able to play. Because why would he tell FSU any actual information? Am I crazy? Or like, it seems so obvious to me. You're probably right. I mean, you know, I, I know we're not expecting uh, Tyler to play right now. Um, you know, we, we heard that this was going to be a multi-week thing. Well, when two we... week, yeah, two, maybe three. Definitely two I had heard. And then maybe Georgia Tech, he'll have, he might, he has a chance to be back for Georgia Tech is what I had heard last week. I haven't, you know, sources tend to tighten up uh, in the Mario Cristobal program. So <laughs> that's what I heard last week. Yeah, now, uh, and then at that point, it doesn't make sense to bring him back for Georgia Tech. We'll see. But, uh, you know, I'm well, expecting... If he's, if, he's, if he's healthy. I'm expecting to they see need, Jake. They still need to make a bowl game at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm expecting to see Jake uh, right now. We'll, we'll see how it how it plays out, if that changes during the course of the week. I mean, I think if there's any way that Tyler can practice this week and play, they would love that. Uh, but... Uh, you know, they're going to have to trust Jake more this week. Uh, oh, yeah. Like- and if, and it, look, I, I, I hope Jake does great. If he doesn't early, I would think that they will have a very quick decision to make on Jakari as, Jakari as well. Because, um, you know, if, if Florida State can score points. This is not Virginia where you can just sort of muddle your way through with – you muddle your way through with a very conservative game plan. If Jake is is having issues, if he's throwing the ball into coverage, if he's not able to push the ball downfield – they may need that running, short passing attack that J- Jakari can at least bring in some respect. Jakari's not going to be able to throw the ball downfield accurately. He's just he's just really not. But he can hit anything within ten yards of the line of scrimmage, and he can run enough Sometimes. that he might be able to <laughs> he might be able to really have an impact against Florida State, even as a even as a true freshman. So it's something to monitor. You know, uh, if if Jake struggles early, which hopefully he won't, we'll probably see more Jakari. On Saturday, I, I think they'll expand that aspect of the offense. But the bottom line is that they are going to have to trust Jake more. They are going to have to be more freewheeling. They are going to have to throw the football down the field uh, because they are going to need to score points in this game. Uh, and if they don't, I am not uh, optimistic that it's going to go real well. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens uh, in in that regard. Uh, okay, uh, another, other stories we have today. Uh, we, we take a look at the point guards of Miami basketball, and we're a week away from the start of basketball season. Uh, get fired up, everybody. I don't know whether you would convert. If you weren't a, a Miami basketball fan last year, I hope the Elite Eight run converted you a little bit. Get excited for Miami basketball this year. This team is going to be serious, okay? I They are going to be very, very good. They might be better than last year's team, seriously. And um, if they shoot the ball as well as they can, they will be better, I think, than last year's team. And be. Last year's team was terrible. They only made it to the Elite Eight. I know, but I'm not saying, you know, look, the NCAA tournament is who you get matched up against and how you play on that given day. And I'm not going to sit here and predict they're going to the Elite Eight again or are going to be a half away from the Final Four again. But uh, this team is... Yeah, talent, re- talent-wise, talent pure talent-wise on paper, they're better than last year. And Laranega always does more with less, so hopefully he doesn't do less with more because, you know, we'll see. We'll see. He's got more this year. Well, I agree with you. The beauty of it is, like, you know, everyone's focused on Isaiah Wong and Nigel Pack, the, the, yeah. the super backcourt. But Jordan Miller... Has has really worked on his game in the off season, and Larry Nega thinks he can be an All ACC player this year. That's how good he's become. And then Wuga Poplar is just exploding in the last couple months, and his the light bulb's gone on. He's confident, and he has become a monster out there. Uh, Wuga Poplar is playing really, really good basketball. And uh, you know, you add that to all the other guys they have and all the different pieces and stuff. The only thing they are lacking. Um, they've got one big guy and he's a freshman favor air. And there are going to be some games when they get to the ACC that they're going to need favor air to give them some minutes just so they're not getting manhandled inside. Um, you know, if, 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 if Norcat Omir gets into, uh, any foul trouble or whatever, they may need this freshman favor air to give them quality minutes. So that's a variable that we don't know, but this basketball team is going to be very good. Everybody today, we take, uh, an in-depth look at the point guards on the team. Uh, Make sure that you check that out. Uh, We also have our Miami Hurricanes in the NFL Week 8 highlights. So uh, if you want to get caught up on what's going on with your Pro Canes, make sure you take a look at that as well. All right, that's going to do it 
today for uh, Good Morning Kane Sport, a.k.a. Gary Furman annihilates Matt Shodell. Congratulations on your wonderful victory. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, once, once, listen, once every year, I'll throw you a bone. This was your bone. Enjoy it. The Shodell um, bone. Either way, hope you enjoyed uh, spending a little part of your morning with us. We totally appreciate you, uh, your support of this show. If you do like it, hit your subscribe button, hit your like button. It helps us with the YouTube algorithms, whatever the heck that means. Uh, and as always, if you haven't yet subscribed to canesport.com, uh, please do so. Uh, your subscriptions allow us to do what we do every day. Tonight at 8, program note, Kane Sport Live. We're going back to audio-only format. Uh, we've thrown away all the new equipment that we bought that was giving us all kinds of trouble. <laughs> Probably should have been done six weeks ago. I apologize for that. It's now officially been discarded. We're going back to audio only on Kane Sport Live. You'll have, you'll have your link uh, on the website. Uh, showtime tonight is 8 o'clock, and uh, looking forward to that. Uh, tomorrow night, um, we have the Lamar Thomas show. Um, uh, don't know who the guests are yet. Uh, Lamar has not given me the, his uh, illustrious guest list yet, but I'll probably be able to tell you who that is. Uh, in, in the morning. So for Matt Shodell, I'm Gary Furman. Thank you once again for joining us. Have a great day, everybody.